So we've looked at two examples where we're solving an equation involving a trig function. But in both of those examples, we had nice numbers we were working with. In this video, we'll ask what happens if we have not nice numbers. And the answer, I'll give it away right now, it's simple enough. We use technology. We use the inverse trig functions. So I'll basically do the example from the textbook, except that we already used the sign twice in a row. So for a little variety, let's solve the cosine of x equals 0 0.8. Zero point eight, unlike one half and the square root of two over two, this isn't something that we know the solution to, but inverse trig functions to the rescue, we can go to our calculus later and ask it what's the arc cosine of 0 0.8. Now notice this is just going to give us one solution. We'll type this into our calculator and we'll get one solution. In the previous two videos, we got infinite solutions, and that's going to happen here as well. Now that we have a solution, um, the steps we're going to follow are the same as the steps we've been following. So the arc cosine gives us a solution in the first quadrant. Looking at reference angles, the second quadrant and the third quadrant are worthless to us because the cosine would be negative there. But the angle in the fourth quadrant with this as a reference angle will work just fine. And if you happen to remember, if not, this is a good time to review, but if you happen to remember how to find these reference angles, um, it's going to be 2 pi, in this case, minus 0 0.643. Let me plug that into a calculator. We get an angle in the fourth quadrant, we'd got in an angle in the first quadrant, and now once again, because of periodicity, we actually have an infinite number. of solutions. If we have trig functions other than the sine or the cosine, um and we want and we need to do something like this. Um, if we're working with our calculator, 
because our calculator just has the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. What you would do is convert to the other trig function. So I don't want to dwell too much on this example because I think this video is probably long enough already, but we remember that the cosecant is one divided by the sine. We can divide both sides by 1.87. And we wind up with, again, let me just pause while I plug this into my calculator. We wind up with this equation that we now solve in the way that we've seen. We use the arc sign, we use the reference angles, that is, oh, what the heck, even if the video runs a little long, let's finish the problem out. Once we have this, we can use the arc sign to get a solution. Then we use reference angles to get another solution. Again, we're using this reference angle, but not that reference angle or that reference angle because we're looking for faces where the sign is positive. So pi minus 0 0.563 equals 2.579. We have two solutions. But really, because this sign is periodic with period 2 pi, we have a bunch of solutions. Where when I say a bunch, I mean we have infinitely many. And I think that does it for this subsection.